In this video, I'm going to show you a simple way to collect web-based assignments from students. So if the students are doing any kind of web assignment, maybe they're doing a live binder or a s'more, a Vokey, a blog, a YouTube video, or even a Google Doc, anything that has a unique URL or address can be collected in this way. The first thing that we're going to do as the teacher is to set up a form to collect our student information. I've already gone ahead and logged into my Drive account. I'm going to click Create and Form. The first thing you'll need to do is choose a title and a theme for your form. There are a couple of ways that you can go about collecting these assignments. You can choose to create one form for all of your classes and use that same form for your assignment collection in each class or you could do a separate form for each class. So you could do one for period one, one for period two, another one for period three, and so on. If you do the assignment collection um, in one form for all of your classes, all of that information will feed into the same spreadsheet. If you choose to create separate forms, each class will have its own spreadsheet. So it's really about how you like to organize your things. I'm going to do one form for all of my classes, so I'm going to call it Assignment Collection. You can choose a theme. If you don't choose a theme, the default one will be selected, and click OK. The first thing that you'll need to do is scroll to the top of your form. At the top, you'll see some Norfolk Public School settings. Now, if you check the first box, that means they will have to have a Norfolk Public Schools login in order to view the form. If you check the second box, their usernames will automatically be collected when they submit the form. The second option is nice because then the stu students don't have to type in their name you can simply use the automatic collection of it. Now, if you're using this form with students who have not logged into their Google account, for example, elementary students probably have not logged into their Google account, you'll want to be sure to leave these two options unchecked so that they can access the form. I'm going to assume that I'm working with older students. They have signed into their Google account. I want their username to be automatically collected, so I'm going to leave these options checked. Remember, uncheck for students who have not used their Google account, go ahead and check for students that have used it. Again, you'll see the title of the form and a place for a form description. Uh, this might be good for some additional directions. If you choose to leave this blank, nothing will be um, shown here on the final form. Your form starts with one question. Um, for this particular question, we are going to use, um, ask the students to input the URL of their assignment. For the question title, I've just chosen to put Assignment URL. I did choose to put some help text here um, just to make sure the students were clear on what they needed to do, and I put copy and paste the URL or address of your assignment here. Now the question type is multiple choice. That's not going to be a good option for this particular question, so we're going to go ahead and change that. You could use paragraph text, which gives the students a big box for their answer, or you could choose the text option, which gives the students a much smaller box for their answer. Sometimes those web addresses can be quite long, so I might use paragraph text for this, and that way they won't have to scroll back and forth in order to see the entire address that they paste in here. We want to make this a required question, and that means that the students will have to answer this question before they will be allowed to submit the form. Go ahead and click Done. Now remember, I'm doing this uh, form for all of my classes, so it would be helpful when I go through to grade these assignments if I can sort my spreadsheet, my responses, based on period. So I'm going to add another item, and this time I'm going to do choose from a list, and I'm going to put my class periods in here. So for the second question, the students are going to have to select the class period that they are in. I'm going to make this a required question so that they have to answer it before they can submit the form, and I'm going to click Done. So this is what the question will look like. They'll choose from this drop-down list which class period they are in. At the bottom of the form, you see the confirmation information. This is the message that they will receive after they hit the Submit button. Um, you can change that if you want to. By default, this first option is checked. If you leave that checked, that means they will be able to submit another response. I generally uncheck that. Um, usually, I just want them to submit one time. Um, in this case, you might want to have them submit multiple times in case they get the address wrong, but they can always go back and fill in the form again. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to choose where we want our responses to go. So we're going to click this button, Choose Response Destination. 
By default, the first option is checked. By default, they will go into a new spreadsheet called Assignment Collection Responses. And the responses is after that so that you know that the difference between the form and the responses where the answers are. You can also make a new sheet in an existing spreadsheet and you have the option of always creating a new spreadsheet. So if you always want the new spreadsheet to be created, check this box and then you won't have to um, go through this step anymore. The last option is to keep the responses only in the forms. And you may want to do that sometime, but in this case we want individual answers. So we're going to need to create a new spreadsheet. Click Create. Now that our form is set up, we are ready to distribute this form to our students. And there are a variety of ways that you can accomplish this. The first option is if your students are using their Gmail account, you can send the form to them via Gmail. So I'm going to click the blue Send Form button and I can add their email addresses right here. So if my students are already using their Google accounts, they're actively using their Gmail, you can email the form to them. Your other two options are to share the link to the form with them, and that's right here. So you could copy this link and paste this on your School Fusion page. You could write it on the board. And then the last option is you can actually embed this form either in your School Fusion page, maybe on a blog or another website. If you click the Embed button, you'll get access to the HTML code. You'll copy this and paste that into the HTML area of your blog or your website. In this example, I'm going to show you how a student would receive the form via email. So I've entered in my student's email address and I'm going to go ahead and click send. I have a student account open, so I'm going to go ahead and open that account. I have switched to my student account and you can see here is the message that I sent them. And here is the link that they will need to access to fill out the form. So they'll just click on the link in the email. The form will open in a new tab and they'll see the directions and they see that they need to copy and paste the URL of the ad, of, or the address of the assignment here. So in this case, I'm going to have my students submit a SMORE that they have been working on. And um, the SMORE, uh, link for the SMORE is over here on the right-hand side, right here in this area. So I'm just going to highlight that, and I'm going to use Control-C to copy it. I'm going to come back to my form, and I'm going to do Control-V to paste it. And the next question is the class period. So I'm going to select the class period that I am in. And remember, this is from the student perspective now. So once they filled in both of those questions, they can go ahead and click Submit. They'll see their confirmation message that their response has been recorded. Now let's take a look at what happens from the teacher's perspective. So I'm going to switch back to my teacher account. And I have the form open, so in the form I'm going to click View Responses. And I can tell that I already have one response from this form um, in my spreadsheet. So I'll click View Responses. And here is the information that was submitted. Notice that the username of the student was automatically collected and the date and time that they submitted this assignment was also automatically collected. So if you say it has to be due by a certain date and time, um, it will automatically timestamp the form when they submit it. Here's the assignment URL, so I can go ahead and click there and then click the Go To link and that will open up that student s'more. I can grade it right here on the screen and then submit their assignment or submit, give them feedback on their assignment. No papers have to be printed and that's just a really simple way that you can collect web-based assignments from your students.